welcome back to Chat Chit. And round one is almost complete. We've got Frio and Brisbane still going in the fourth quarter and Frio are going to win that game. Amazing way to finish the round. And that just epitomizes what round one is, which is everyone puts in, like us, puts in their predictions. And, and you're not really sure how it's going to go. Yeah, and, no, but everyone says that, everyone feels pretty sure. Like I, I felt pretty sure about, about what I thought was going to happen and then it never ends up turning out that way. And we're going to start out this episode by doing our top five players of the round, highlighting the best performances. And we should mention that Caleb Sarong playing right now is on track for about... Oh, he started getting tagged, but he was on track for 50 disposals. And so we don't know where he would end up fitting in there, so we'll just give him an honourable mention. Currently has 35 at the start of the fourth. Yeah, it's a bit unreal. Yeah. So he's unfortunate to be playing in the last game, but yeah, an honourable mention for both. And you'd hate to have traded them out of your Supercoach team in the middle of the round. Happens. Not for me. It happens. But anyway, Aiden, start us off with your number five player of the round. My number five player of the round, and this is something I think you're going to like. I think you're really going to like this, because I put James Robot in. As my fifth best player for the round. And it's my favorite player. I think I'd be devastated for you because I don't think you've got him. The bloke had 13 tackles, kicked a goal, and he brought the intensity of the MCG. Maybe that's a little bit of bias, but honestly, I think he has 16 disposals. But I mean, if when you rock up to the MCG and you're playing Collingwood in front of 90,000 fans and 95% of the crowd is Collingwood and you're bringing the heat, mm. and it wasn't just. Uh, tackles just in and around the the rock it was run down tackles there was intense tackles he, he threw his body into everything so that's why i've put him at number five mm, i've got more to say in a second about the swans midfield but yeah the swans midfield was excellent and james robotham just he's just a player that i think any team would be really grateful to have you talk about some midfields in the league that have an imbalance of lots of guys who go and chase after the ball but not anyone who's playing that defensive role of really just tackling hard and being really hard at the footy um, and at the player. And James Robottom just does that so unbelievably well. Like uh, he's, he's a Matt Rowell type in that way and he just completely dominated and it was amazing. I love that. At number five, I've got another Swans midfielder that had a huge game. I've yeah. got Isaac Heaney. Okay. And yeah, it's been talked about so much, but we're just going to talk about it as well, that he is proving himself as one of the best midfielders in the league uh, when he gets the chance and he's done it for two games in a row now I hope it can continue and as I said last week I hope he stays in a prominent midfield role even with Taylor Adams and Luke Parker back in the team And but I like that he goes forward sometimes because that gives him time to rest so that when he is in the midfield he's explosive and when he goes forward he dominated up there too kicked two goals and was just an aerial beast it's and I know we're both hoping that he gets full-time midfield for the whole season or the same sort of thing that he's getting now, mm. which is unfortunately not going to happen. I don't necessarily agree. Really? I think Longmire doesn't feel a lot of pressure. He, do- he doesn't really care about what the media says, but I don't think this is about the media. This is just the fact that the Swans are going to be a better team with Isaac Heaney spending at least 50% of his time in the midfield. Well, I hope that's the case. I um, really hope so. You I'll might jump right. into my number four. I've put Tom Green. Um, 37 disposals, a goal... Um, I think 150 plus super coach points. I know that's not relevant here, but honestly, I know it's against a North, uh, a pretty depleted North team who aren't going to be very high up on the ladder, but still to come out and absolutely dominate. Um, I don't know how many contested possessions he had, but it was really impressive to watch. And he's doing it week in, week out now. He's going to come out really hot in the Brown though. He's got votes both of the first two rounds and next week against against uh, North looks pretty or against West Coast looks pretty nice for him yeah uh, he yeah he's definitely a Brownlow favourite I'll go into my number four which was Max Gorn okay I didn't actually have him I didn't get to see the entire match but from what I saw Max Gorn it looks like he took it personally the criticisms he was receiving after round round zero where he got I've never seen him get dominated mm-hmm. like he got dominated by Barry Grundy but yeah he he was absolutely huge and and I, I think really got the better of Tim English in the rock contest. And yeah, he was huge. And we know when, when he's at his best, there's no Ruckman that can that can do it like Max. Fair. You got it three. At three, I put Chad Warner. A three goals, 27 disposal performance. Pretty impressive. We've got, we've managed to have three Swans players here as well. I'm assuming you've got Chad Warner as well. Yeah, I'll say um, I have him at number two. I have but him at number two. Last week, we criticized him for having a one quarter performance. This week, he's had a full four quarter performance. Mm. And he's shown what we've been was waiting for um, from Chad Warner, but to put it together for a whole season, 
this is the sort of form we're, we're sort of looking for. Yeah, and I'll say there'll be a lot of Swans and GWS players in both of our lists here, and I think it reflects that those, I reckon, are by far the two best teams in the league right now. In my eyes, the, there was a clear sort of four best teams coming in or teams that I think could really dominate the, the league coming into the season, and that was the two Sydney teams and the two grand finalists from last year. And we've seen that Collingwood and Brisbane have not had a strong start to the season. So I think Sydney and GWS look really, really strong all over the field. And yeah, their players are really shining and standing out. I'll go because my number three is Tom Green, who we've okay. already talked about, and yeah. my number two is Chad Warner. Okay. Who, yeah, he was absolutely huge. His, he's so bouncy. Though He just intercepted handballs, I think, three or four times just by jumping and hanging in the air and getting to a height that the the like the Collingwood midfielders or players just didn't expect him to get to. And, yeah, it, you just don't really see that happen consistently. I mean, when you picture Chad Warner, you picture him bursting through a stoppage, mm. running in on goal, and kicking from 50, which is pretty much what he did the other day. Um, so, yeah, love to see it. I'll go into my number two. I've got Jesse Hogan. Um, now kicked 10 goals for the season. I know it's not relevant to the round, but six goals, 13 score involvements. I think it's something we've ex- we've wanted to see from Jesse for quite a few years now. But he's almost he's taken the pressure off Toby Green um, as a guy where I know uh, Toby Green isn't a key forward, but they've been quite reliant on him the last few years since their, since their induction into the competition. Um, and now you've got a guy who is drawing the best defender each week, freeing up the rest of the mid- freeing up the rest of the forward line, and he's kicking straight. He's kicking accurately and contributing to the rest. Um, so yeah, I put him at number two. I've got Hogan at number one. Okay, I thought he enough. was the best player of the round. He started off with ten goals in two games, and I can absolutely see him winning the Coleman Medal this year. I think he is not going to. You can't pay. Uh, you can't overpay attention to Jesse Hogan. Because elsewhere in that forward line, you have the best forward in the league in Toby Green. You have guys like Brent Daniels and Toby Bedford that are always just like lurking. And then you've got um, all the, all of their forwards are in good form. Like Aaron Cadman is a really high draft pick who's showing lots of promise. So I think Jesse Hogan's in a perfect position to just tear apart the league this year. Now, someone I put at number one who wasn't even in your top five, yeah. but I was just really happy to see this guy back to his best. And it was Clayton Oliver. Mm. 35 disposals. I've, I've never seen a game where so much ball goes through one guy against a very good midfield in, in Bontempelli, Trelaw, Liberatore. I, I was just really happy after we've seen all the off-field stuff. He had a very average game against Sydney last week. Looked a bit unfit. Um, but, I mean, he was just re- unbelievable. Back to top three best player in the competition, as we might talk about later. Yeah, I like that. He, he was unreal. But yeah, I've got him at number one. I absolutely loved his performance. Um, next, uh, a new segment. We're gonna. It's called hit or miss. So what we've done is it can be players, it can be teams, it can be off field, it can be coaches, it can be literally anything. But we're gonna have two hits and two misses. We're gonna run through it quite quickly, but just something also helps sum up the round from what we've seen. So I'll, I'll start off with a hit. I've put Harley Reid as a hit. When you have got that much expectation, and that's not easy. A team that has honestly been terrible in West Coast, but he's been on the front page, the back page, day in, day out in Western Australia, from what I've heard. Uh, they're expecting him to take the competition by storm. We've seen he's been, for the last year, he's been this guy that's supposed to be the next big thing in footy. And he didn't have any unbelievable performance, but he still put in a very, very uh, a good performance, I'd say. And when you've probably got the opposition want to really, wanna, wanna really get into him, um, like showing what footy's about and he's probably under a lot of pressure to perform I was just really impressed so I've got him as one of my hits I thought he played like a guy that's been in the league for a few years he played like one of those really talented guys who's been in the league for a few years he played with experience just no big errors was really tough and was seemed to run hard the whole game where it, like they chucked him up forward for a lot of the game and in the midfield a bit he was he was really really good I my first hit was just impressive debutants. Okay. I thought this crop of players, especially some midfielders, is seems to be really deep and really impressive. Obviously, I had Reed in there, but I also just like the highlights of that are Colby McKercher at North. He is really, really good right now. He's got that half back role. They probably don't want to rough him up too much on on the inside, and maybe maybe he is a half back for the long term. But I think he'll end up in the midfield. But he is just really 
like a wise decision maker already. It's it's strange and real. Jeez, yeah, he can just rack him up. Must have been super coach if you faded him round one. I've also mentioned Riley Sanders, who got subbed off, but we know how good he's yeah. going to be. Uh, I don't really know why they subbed him off. Maybe they thought it, I, I'm not really sure. Maybe they it was just a plan going into the game to warm him up into AFL footy. And Zane Dersma was really great for North Melbourne as well. So I just wanted to say the impressive debutants. What was your second hit? My second was was Isaac Heaney. I think I know we've been waiting for him to play midfield and, and get this sort of time in the midfield, but he's had two games there and and probably racked up five potentially five Brownlow votes. I'd say minimum four potentially. Um, and I think it's just really great to see. I know as a, as a Sydney fan for years we've been begging him to stick him in the midfield. Whenever he's there, he gets his hands on the gets his hands on the footy. Gets a clearance. He's really rough on the ball. He's one of the best one-on-one marks in the competition, if not the best one-on-one mark in the competition. He's about five foot eleven. He plays like he's six foot three, and and now we're seeing all of this come together into a dominant midfielder. So oh yeah, he's my other hit. Yeah, he's been huge, and we've already talked. We've already talked about him. My second hit was the Gold Coast start and a potential Gold Coast finals run. I was skeptical. I think not because of anything in the personnel, obviously not the coaching with Damian Hardwick. I think I just saw what Gold Coast has been since they since their insurrection, which was which is always disappointing, pretty yeah, always underwhelming and always with high expectations, or especially recently, always with these lofty expectations that they don't meet. But it does look different this year. I don't think it is what it's been for the last few years, which is just early like little bits of hope this looks like a team that's good sort of all around they have a really strong defense like Charlie Ballard and Sam Collins are one of the really premier key back combinations and I think they have one of arguably the the best midfield trio in the competition right now in Anderson Miller and Raul with with Wits and then also Flanders going through there those three work really nicely together I talked earlier about how like someone like Robottom or Raul brings that balance that lots of teams are really craving with a guy that's not just searching for the footies, playing a role for the team. Uh, and I think they have something really good going on. So I wanted to mention Gold Coast as a hit here. So when Damien Hardwick said he thinks he's got 80% of the premiership group, are you starting to believe him? Definitely. I think there's absolutely a premiership core there where if they had a little bit more experience in their forward line, like... They've got really promising guys. Malcolm Roses is having a big rise over the last couple of years. And obviously Ben King, who is starting to get some consistent fitness. When they get some more experience in that forward line, I think they could absolutely be premiership contenders even as early as next year. I'll go to my first miss. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it's they've only played one game, but there was a, a lot of expectation from this team. That's Adelaide. I'll put Adelaide mm-hmm. as a miss. I almost had them as a miss. And I know it's one game, and I know it could be a bit reactionary, but they were really poor. Bar, if you take that last 15 minutes out of the game... That was almost junk time until they piled a couple more in and it became close. But Gold yeah. Coast, I think, had zoned out a little bit. As in, yeah, but if you take the last 15 minutes out, it was one of the worst performances I think I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> gen- no, genuinely, genu- they, were run- they were run through. You watched... West Coast lose by 170 to us last year. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it. Okay, <laughs> they were as in for the expectation that they had. The expectation was West Coast were gonna get smashed. The expectation was Adelaide were coming this competition, and I think 90, at least 90 percent of people, maybe more, had them making the top eight. I know it's the first round. I know it's reactionary, but Adelaide missed here. I did, I did not like their performance at all. Yeah, I agree that they were disappointing. That was a massive overstatement. One of the worst performances you've ever seen. That's okay. The- based on expectation, I'll, I'll take that back. We did watch West Coast of the SCG lose by 170. My first miss was Collingwood and Brisbane, potential grand final hangover. Same as as the Geelong. That's what I was saying. I've said becoming a trend. Last year, we had Sydney and Geelong, who halfway through the season were like 14th and 15th, I think. Swans ended up scraping into finals and Geelong didn't make finals. And it's it's becoming a little bit of a trend that when you have such strength all around the league, you sort of need that motivation or else you like you can't just get there with talent obviously Collingwood and Brisbane have two of the most talented uh and like deep teams in the league but if you don't have that real motivation they're gonna they're gonna have to find it because the rest of the team is not gonna lag behind the rest of the league is not gonna lag behind I feel like it's really deep this year well you know I had it's funny I had an exam the other day (laughs) at, at uni and I put my hand up and I said Collingwood right and the teacher comes over 
and she knew they were finished. <laughs> okay, my second miss, my second miss is the Collingwood forward line. So sort of building on building on what you said. Now, for a couple years now, I think they've really lacked the, that real big key forward. Um, but this year, like that. But also they're they're starting. They're not kicking straight at all. They were eleven sixteen in the first game and ten nine. Um, against Sydney, and I know Sydney's dominated that game, but then again, you kick a few goals, you build pressure, you build confidence in your team, and it really helps. In that first game, 11 goals, 16. They were in that game if they if they kick straight. So I think that's a huge problem for Collingwood. I think Nathan Murphy being out in defence is is another thing that's that's hurting them. But I think the main issue right now is is their forward line. Yeah, I think personnel wise. Yes, Nathan Murphy's a great player, but they still have Darcy Moore, Braden Maynard, Jeremy Howe, Isaac Coyne back there. They are not uh they're not lacking in, in personnel back there. I think this is definitely the yeah, just something to do with the 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 way that they're playing and we know that they'll bounce back or we think it's I think it's very likely that they'll bounce back, especially with how much belief they have as a team, um and how just how many good players they have around there. But uh yeah, their forward line has been pretty poor. My second miss was just the ACL injuries we're seeing. I, it's just one of the worst things to see because it's, it's just absolutely out of nowhere and there's nothing you can ever do to prevent them. And so just shout out to those guys. They're going to have to go. What is it? Miss the rest of the four, season. Four now? Yeah. Gibkiss and Gota this round. And last round, it was Doherty and Coleman. And it's they're two each round. That's yeah, like, we've had four ACLs in 13 games. The ACL is just like the... What's what's it called? Just just the the death re- the grim reaper. It just it's, comes around and just catches you. Yeah, as in we've never seen this many ACL injuries yeah. in such a short time period. So yeah, it's really unfortunate. And yeah, a hundred percent. That's that's a miss of the yeah. competition so far. We'll move on into something a bit more positive. Swans versus Collingwood. Yes. Okay. Uh, should I start us off? Yeah, kick us off. Okay. Well, the Swans were extremely impressive, obviously. Um, and we've just talked about Collingwood, so maybe I'll focus on the Swans. I think. The defense looks way more solid than last year. Uh, big weakness with the Swans last year was we didn't have any key backs. And that was partially due to injury and partially due to, even, even if everyone was fit, Tom McCartan is our main key back, is someone that's not particularly tall. He's a very undersized key back. And so we just didn't have a lot of size back there. And we had a lot of injuries. This year, Lewis Melican. I was, that was the first thing I was going to mention. What a performance. He and that was, The first thing I was going to say is the most unexpected performer in that game was Lewis Melican. I think he took five intercept marks in the first quarter. But he was just dominant. As mm-hmm. in, I never thought I'd say a Lewis Melican is dominant against Collingwood. Yeah. But on, he was... It was I, know, I know we had the likes of Chad Warner, we had Robot, and we had Heaney. Um, and there were a bunch of other guys who performed really well. But what I took out of that game was we potentially have found our key back. Potentially. Well, it is potentially reactionary, but we'll see. Yeah, and Tom McCartan was as good as ever back there. But Lewis That's Melican was, was... Yeah, Lewis Melican is worth mentioning. The other one that I'd want to mention is Justin McInerney. I think he's someone that no one will talk about. First couple of rounds, he's got a goal and 20 and a goal and 20. And Justin McInerney is someone that has a lot of flair to him. He loves his celebrations. He does the Mikhail Bridges celebration. You won't know who he is. No, but, I know who he is. He imitates this NBA player. It's, it's like a, he just points at you. But anyway... Uh, He's got a lot of flair, but he makes he makes some errors. He's one of those players who maybe gets a little overconfident sometimes, but we have not seen that this year. We've just seen the flair without the mistakes, and but we're loving he's it. He's going to need a few more of those performances if he wants to not be on the fringes when we start to get players back. I reckon, you yeah, reckon? he's, he's going to have to keep it going. It's, there's a lot of depth in the squad. I think... I know we're talking positives with Sydney, but Jake Lloyd is someone who... Maybe it's hard to see what his role is moving forward for the Swans. His... It's always been uh, known that he is not the strongest or the fastest. He's not the most uh, most physical player, especially as a defender, but he's there as a distributor and someone that is super, super reliable launching our attack. However, he no longer plays that role for us anymore. We have Nick Blakey, Matt Roberts, Harry Cunningham, Oli Florent all well, playing I that think role. Matt Roberts is the guy that's really taken, taken his yeah. spot. I think maybe they're looking for a bit more size in the back line and there was a lot of expectation I know we saw a lot of Swans players come out and there was the interviews about who's going to be the most impressive player this season or most improved player this season or who's going to be the biggest surprise and a bunch of them said Matt Roberts and I think we're just starting to see what he's capable of yep. and I thought 
I feel like he's been talked about on the fringes of the team for a couple of years, but and he and he looks like a grown man with the with his body and the way that he plays. He's twenty. He's he's younger than me yeah. and you. I remember yeah, when we watched that first game, and I think what you said you was he you thought he was twenty three. Yeah, I guess something like that. Looked it up, and he's twenty years old. Yeah, Matt Matt Roberts looks really really good and a big talent for the future. Let's move on. Going back to Thursday, Thursday night, night at the MCG, first game at the MCG, and I think the Melbourne fans will be very happy saying, "See the footy's best yeah, here." Look what happens when you have <laughs> round one for opening game, Carlton Richmond. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a really good game there. What did you think? I think the most disappointing part of the game was that Carlton won. Shy Bolton oh. didn't take it cleanly in the last fifteen <laughs> seconds of the game. He, there was a, there was a bounce, and you'd expect him to take it cleanly, and he has a snap on goal, mm-hmm. and they potentially win that game. Yep. But besides that, Carlton were very very impressive. Richmond did a lot more than what I was expecting. Maybe it was just like round one. I know we had rounds there, but like the round one opening game, ninety thousand the MCG fans are behind you, so it was a different atmosphere. Maybe it sort of played towards them, like it helped them out. But some positives. Lynch is back. He helped them out a lot. Uh, Nan Kervis was was great. Noah Bolter almost He's, made my top five for the rounds. I think yeah. if Richmond had won that game, I think he would have been in my top five. I don't know if he's better as a forward or as a defender. I'm not sure either. But what he's he's very mobile. I don't for for a guy he's his a size, real athlete. He's a real athlete. I I loved him down forward, but I know they're going to need him down back. He led the um, league in intercept marks last year. Like three goals. Uh, I think he had 18 on disposal. Similar uh, stats last week. Perfect down back. Perfect down forward. I'm not really sure where they're going to play him. I think the one uh, thing that Adam Uze missed for Richmond was when Kerner went behind the ball. And it took about 5-10 minutes before adjusted. Richmond adjusted. I think Bolter should have gone up straight away and matched him. Stuck him in the forward line. Because it doesn't matter if you lose by 2 or 3 goals. But if you can try and gamble and win the game then, I mean, it's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. Another player that I thought was very... He was very close to my top five was Paddy Cripps. Because especially in a game like that, which is super hard fought, didn't really matter how good Carlton or Richmond were. It was always going to be a close game. Actually, it's easy to say that in hindsight, but it was just that kind of game. The first game of the MCG on a Thursday night to a packed out crowd. And Paddy Cripps got 20 plus contested possessions and he was inspirational. And yeah, he's... You know, reminded everyone that... What's exactly what you want from your captain, leading from the front. Yeah. Um, We'll move on uh, to another game. A game that I want to talk about, the Geelong-St. Kilda game. So I know a lot of us uh, had Geelong sort of falling off a little bit more this season, maybe because of age, um, haven't quite got the... They've got a couple guys retiring, but at home, you you cannot uh, go against Geelong. I know there was a lot of expectation from St. Kilda here, but like the, the, the Gold Coast Adelaide game, if it wasn't for that the little fourth quarter comeback from St. Kilda, it was a bit of a blowout. I have to confess, Geelong are good. It's unfortunate because I think uh, us and other people making ladders every year are told if you put Geelong outside the eight, they're going to show you up. Yeah. And I know it's just one game in, but... They looked really impressive. Yeah, if you look at last week's power rankings, I think I had Geelong at somewhere from 11 to 13. And if I'm looking back at the reasons for that, because I, ha- I haven't believed this whole, you know, dad's army getting too old narrative. And I've like argued with you about that. I, I don't really believe in that. I think the reason I put them there is that I want them to fail. It's probably what lots of teams around the league think about the Swans and think about and think about Geelong because they're teams that are so consistently dominant. Swans, I heard a stat this week, which I knew it was a lot, but Swans have made the most finals series in the last 28 years. Guess how many in the last 28 years? Last 28 years, I said 21. 23. 23. Swans have made 23 of the last 28 final series. Geelong are in second with 20 of them. So I think I just wanted them to fail. They're a team that I never liked coming up against, especially after the grand final a couple of years ago. But they are genuinely good. They do have young talent coming through. While they do have a lot of guys that are going to come to the end of their career at some point in the next few years, uh, they, I think, are still a team that can compete this year. But I do think their ladder position at the end of the year and how they perform will be entirely based on how their older, experienced players can make it through the season. Yeah. So Dangerfield, Cameron, Hawkins... Then, um, then midfield is in a lot of worry if Dangerfield can't stay fit because they really don't have... 
Like, they have good players there, like a Tanner Bruin has had a bit of a breakout year last year. Cam Guthrie, unfit right now, like we're saying, some of those older players. But, yeah, Pat Dangerfield gives them an element there that really makes their midfield okay when it would be otherwise pretty bad compared to the rest of the league. Yeah, there were a couple other results this weekend. I saw GWS dispatch North Melbourne. Um, Essendon get a nice win over Hawthorne. Gold Coast, like we said, just hold on against Adelaide. Melbourne, which I think this looks really good for Sydney. Melbourne performed really well to beat the Dogs. Really pushed on in the fourth quarter. Adelaide did what every team was expecting Port Adelaide, them to do. Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide did what every team was expecting them to do against West Coast. But we want to talk about the game that's finishing off right now. Frio, who we'll get to my power rankings in a moment, but I had them in 16th last week. Um, I'd like <laughs> you to take a guess how many disposals. The game's about to finish. Oh. How many disposals does Sarong have? Fremantle are currently up by 23. He was getting hard tagged in the start of the second half or like 10 minutes into the second half they started hard tagging him except I reckon when they're chasing the game in the fourth quarter they, would, they wouldn't they would afford a player to tagging someone. They'd want everyone roaming free to try to get the footy. Does he have Does he have 42 or something? It's 45. How long left? There's. It's about to finish. There's probably a minute maybe left. But he has 45 disposals, 21 kicks, 24 handballs. Um... And he's 80% efficiency. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, that's so yeah, good. he would definitely make our top five performances <laughs> of the round. He's just unfortunate to have played in the last game while we're recording this podcast to get it out to you on Tuesday. No, but talking about Frio, we've talked about the hangover. We'll talk more about it in a second. But Frio, really low expectations because they lost a couple key players in Liam Henry and uh, Lockie, Schultz. Lockie Schultz, players who were really in on the better side of their, of their squad. But... Nat Fife in that midfield makes that midfield look really strong with Sarong and Brayshaw both a year better. Sarong obviously going off today. And Hayden Young also being a part of that midfield gave away a few a couple of early free kicks, but after that was huge. I think ended up with 10 plus tackles, but he was, yeah, he got 10 tackles. Yeah, that midfield looks really strong. Obviously, Luke Jackson is a really special talent and I don't know. Their defense was has been strong the last couple of years. When they made finals two years ago, they I mean, were one Pierce, of the strongest Pierce defenses. Really stood up today. Ryan was Luke awesome Ryan today. Was huge. I'd like to give a shout out to Switkowski, who has had mm. an awesome game from what we watched in the first three quarters. We'll be watching now, obviously, we're recording. But uh, he really he's he's almost the perfect player you want in a team. He's got that chase down tackle. He kicks the the odd, the odd goal every now and again. Not to mention a great representative of the Brotherhood of Sam's. Sam's, right, yeah. Sam Switkowski. What? Sam Switkowski. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't pick that up. I thought. You, I thought you were talking about Sam Weeks. No, I just like got the same sort of. I just got to get behind. Got, got to get behind a good Sam. Okay. There's no no good Aidens in the league. There aren't. Aiden Core <laughs> played pretty poorly the other day, to be honest. But. Um, another thing we'd like to to just bring up is they look like a pretty nasty nasty injury. Um, for one of the Frio players today. Oh, that could be another ACL. Uh, McDonald, I think. It was, it was a hyperextension. Yeah. But that it looked bad. really bad. And uh, Hopefully he's fine. Warner, Kyle Warner on debut, um, could be dead. Yeah, I think he died. Didn't actually. Who did he get hit by? I didn't. I don't remember. But he got uh, hit by someone and I think he might have died. But yeah, he was out cold before he hit the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to put a clip in, but I would recommend going to watch that. Um, not good viewing. Should we get to the power rankings? Just before the power rankings, we have a new segment. Oh, we do. We do. My footy pyramid. <laughs> okay. How it's going to work? Pretty simple. Um, exactly how you expect a pyramid to look. We've got one <laughs> at the top, then two, then three, then four, then five. Adds up to the 15, which is the top 15 players in the league. But we're not necessarily going to look at um, one, sort of one at the top, then two, two, three, like an order of who's in the rows. It's just... If they make that row, that's what determine. That's how we determine how good they are. I love Aiden's. Love I am awful at explaining these, but no, I'm just going to kick it off. It's a really good part of what we do around here. I'm going to start with the bottom of the pyramid and just going to give give you five names. Not going to explain it too much. We're just going to do an update each week. Yeah. Um. So I've got Noah Anderson, Zach mm-hmm. Butters, Isaac Heaney, Lockie Neal, and Paddy Cripps. So is this going to be 15 midfielders? No. My next tier is Gorn, Golden, Sarong, and Toby Green. Mm. My next tier of three, okay. Bontempelli, Clayton Oliver, and Kerno. My next two, Tom Green and Petrarca. 
And number one, Nick Dacos. Can this segment just run by me raising a couple objections I have after you listen to You can say whatever you like. It's not going to change the pyramid. I know. It's not going to change the pyramid. It's just going to make you rethink things. Okay. You have Bontempelli in the third tier. Yes. He's the probably the best player in the league, if not the second I, best player in the league. I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the season so far. Okay. Um, and I really liked what I've seen from the guys who are above him. Okay. You know what? Uh, there's not a single player who plays in the back half of the field here, but that's fine. No, no appreciation. But I, I like the pyramid. I, and I Look, like the segment. if you get in my pyramid, you're doing something good. <laughs> there's a lot of emphasis on the games that have happened so far this season. Um, and a bit of thought to, to the previous seasons, which is why Bontepelli is a little bit lower, because I didn't think he had a great game today. Really? I didn't think... I, as in, for what, apparently, for what I, we, heard, I heard he had an amazing first quarter. For and what we expect from, from Bontempelli, he was quite quiet. Okay. Um, just from what I saw. But yeah, he's my he's in my third tier. That's not, that's not too bad. That could be arguably the fourth best player in the competition. That's not too bad. I think you're <laughs> overreacting a little bit. Uh, he's getting red. He's, he, Bont's going to come for you, bro. I don't know. If he wants to be on the list, he can. But um, if anyone can, can take Nick Dacos' spot on the top of the list, you've done a pretty good job. Yeah. D- Dacos' pyramid, really. Dacos' pyramid. We're trying to find a more catchy name. If you think of a good word that starts with D or N for Nick instead of pyramid, we'll take it. See, I thought Dacos' dungeon. And ChatGPT wasn't much help. It was not much help. But what, did they, what did they give us? Dacos' <laughs> um, Dulcim or something. Some geographical... Uh, or structure or something. Yeah, it doesn't sound too catchy, does it? Anyways, we'll move on to the power rankings. Um, obviously, we know the list based on form and vibes. I've got a picture up. Put it next to next one to the of the list. sides. Or one of the sides here. Or above it. No, probably on the Somewhere sides. Somewhere on the screen, you guys are going to see um, the power rankings from last week, and we're going to go through the power rankings from this week. No teams are on the board. We're going to go through from bottom to top, and while we're going, we're going to talk through the games as well. Form and vibes. Let's get cracking. I'm going to preface this by saying that it's round one. We're seeing a lot of teams for the first time, and there's going to be huge changes, especially this is the round where we're going to see the biggest changes. And so, yes, it's going to look like I'm flip-flopping on teams, teams that I've been talking all preseason about them being poor. I'm suddenly going to have them in the eight and vice versa. However, all of that chatter meant nothing. Now we've actually seen how they're playing. So... I'm trying not to be too reactive. For example, even though Collingwood might be at the bottom of the ladder, they're obviously not the 18th best. I don't think they're the 18th best team in the league, but they're going to have... We'll we'll see, but basically it's going to be quite reactive early on. We'll start off with 18th, and it's West Coast. Shock. Not a whole amount to say. I'm not going to waste my breath when they've... they've, I just hope that they win some games. I think the commentators said this, uh, said today that a pass mark would be if they could win five games. And I'd say I agree with that. And they showed my something. outrageous take of the season was they're going to win less games than the last year. <laughs> Which is doing two or less. Two or less. Okay, in 17th, I've got North. Uh, they really looked poor at parts. GWS, like, they are, in my eyes, you'll see, I think they're, they were number one on the power rankings last week. They're an amazing team all around, and I don't think they get, gave too much of a, of a who you know what about defending North Melbourne. North Melbourne had a lot of open space in GWS. I think just backed themselves to beat them in a shootout. But... North didn't look very strong. The rebuild's still going to take a couple of years. In 16th, I have Hawthorne. I really wanted them to be better this year. I've got a couple injuries. They do have a couple injuries. When guys like Will Day are back, that'll be huge. I really wanted them to be better this year, but they still don't look... They don't look very strong. Similar to North, people, I guess, rebuilds are exciting, like young cores, like Hawthorne Hawthorne and North Melbourne have, uh, are really exciting, except... I think we'll ha- we have to lower our expectations for those two teams. In 15th, I've got Richmond. And here at this point, this is kind of crazy because Richmond just lost by five points to Carlton who look really, really strong. I mean, if Shai Bolton picks up that ball and snaps, they're probably a little bit higher on this on this list. Yes, but I think Richmond did well to be that close to Carlton. It was a big game where I don't... like where it was As I said, it was kind of always going to be close. And... I think Richmond are on the downswing, as we've said. In 14th, I have the Bombers. Yes, they beat Hawthorne, but that game was not particularly high quality, to be honest, and they're going to have to do a bit more to prove themselves that they that they should be higher on this list. In 13th, we've got the Bulldogs. Yeah, got kind of romped by Melbourne, especially in the fourth quarter. It was... <laughs> 
It was, no, it's true. It's true. I was just yeah. I was waiting to see how you described it. Yeah, they got kind of romped in the fourth quarter. Um, their defense is not very strong, and their forward line has never really seemed to gel despite the talent. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be very good this year. It's unfortunate. For the list that they have... Um, they really should be a, a top six contender. Yeah. And when I when I say about this or Essendon, it's a rubbish. Bulldogs are garbage. They'll they'll, they'll be top four <laughs> in two weeks. So, so just just keep that in mind. In twelfth place, I have Adelaide. Woo! This is poor. This is an example of if it was based on how they they played today, it would be fifteenth or sixteenth. But I really think Adelaide can play a lot better than that. It was one game, and it was interesting conditions where it was quite wet at points, and it was difficult to be clean. However, at the same time, they didn't look to play with much system at all, and they just got out hustled by Gold Coast. But could be worse than losing by six points to Gold Coast, who I think are a really strong team. In eleventh, I have St Kilda. Dropped Ooh, it. That that's a big slide, isn't it? I've been super high on St Kilda, and they were in. It's going to be side by side, but they were in fifth, I think, or sixth, oh, or sixth. One of them. Six. They were in sixth. They were in sixth, and I think they. Came up against a strong Geelong team, and St Kilda was solid. St Kilda was solid, and I think they can. I still think they can definitely make the top eight. However, at the same time, there are teams that I had below St Kilda that either got upsets or have been very impressive, and I think St Kilda sit at eleven. At number ten, I have Collingwood dropping five places. I have Collingwood dropping five places to tenth. Obviously, or not obviously. I do still think they're a finals team. I do still think they are a team that could win the AFL this 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 year. But they have been poor the first two weeks. We have not seen any of that fourth quarter run where they suddenly make comebacks. It's been those sort of similar margins that they would come back from towards the end of the third quarter and in the fourth last year. And we just haven't seen it. I mean, um, in their defense, they have come into two pretty good sides first up. Agreed. I know we expected more from Collingwood. But if this was flipped and Collingwood had a North and Richmond as the first two games, we'd probably see them still in the top four. Agreed. But as the commentator said, what did the Swans end up winning by? 30-something? And that includes the fact that Collingwood kicked three garbage time goals. It was, it was 51 points with five minutes left. And Swans kicked really inaccurately. Garbage time. I like that. Garbage time. Yeah. That's what they say in the, in the NBA. <laughs> the points that don't matter. Yeah, it's at the end of the game. Everyone's just stacking up their stats so no one wants to get injured. Collingwood kicked garbage time goals. Garbage time goals. So did St Kilda. <laughs> and so did Adelaide. So did Adelaide. And oh, actually, Adelaide got within a goal, so it was they not did. garbage time. But They lost. It's garbage. Yeah. Collingwood are garbage. In number nine, I have... Okay, and this is... It's Geelong. They've probably earned a spot in the eight. Moved up two places. There are a couple teams that I just have to make a bit of yeah, have to make a bit of a statement about by putting them in the top eight. Geelong looked good, and I think they could continue to rise. They they're on an upward trajectory. In eight, I have I've given a rental spot to the Fremantle Dockers. A rental spot. They did win the game. I'm giving them a rental. I've given them the keys to the to a Ferrari. They've moved up from sixteenth here. Yeah. You know what I've done. They've got no car. They've come and they've said, I've got no money. I need a car. And I've given them the keys to a Hyundai. Mm -hmm. And I've said, in eighth place. And what are they doing with the Hyundai? No, I'm saying, don't break it. Yeah. (laughs) Stop doing this. Okay. (laughs) Show me. Yeah. Show me you can be safe and drive this well. Uh Uh-huh. Do a couple donuts even. Oh, donuts. (laughs) And we'll give you a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. (laughs) But But if you break the Hyundai, you crash it or you can't do donuts. Yeah then you lose the car and you're going back to 15th on the power rankings. Well, but I just don't know quite what we saw. We, I missed the last quarter because of this podcast, but I don't know quite what we saw. They just dominated Brisbane. And if Fremantle, like it's a couple of years ago, they looked like a side that were really, really rising to be a premiership I mean, contender. They won, they won a final. And then absolutely, they, were, they didn't get any worse. A young team that won a final, uh, rising to be a premiership contender. And then they were really awful last year. Mm. And so who knows if they've just suddenly made a, a random bounce back. Who knows what's changed? But they've got the Hyundai in eighth place. In seventh, I've got Port Adelaide, who was solid. The performance today against West Coast meant absolutely nothing. They didn't really need to do much. Yeah, their midfielders, Butters, Rosie, and Horn Francis got to flex their muscles. I will say, shout out to Ivan Soldo. Oh, you great had, performance. You had a huge game today. Huge. And something Port were probably missing. 
especially from the final series last year, a Ruckman that can actually take hold of a game. Absolutely. I remember in the Ruck stats last year, Swans and Port were the two teams that were just way below the rest of the league, just in terms of hitouts, in terms of hitouts to advantage, and just in terms of the output from the indiv- uh, individual Ruckmen. Those were the two teams really struggling, and they both got, it seems, Ruckmen that are going to change that. Mm. Love it. In sixth, I've got... The Melbourne Demons up one spot from last week. Okay. Uh, they won against Bull, uh, Bulldogs while teams like Collingwood faulted. And it was it was good. They did well. They, they the did first well. three quarters was back. close and they pulled away in the fourth. Lots uh, of pressure on them. Clayton Oliver was awesome. Max Gorn was awesome. Petrarca was awesome. Salem was awesome. I mean, their stars really stood up today. Yeah, all the off-season chatter, Clayton Oliver, Joel Smith, all the culture chat and everything. And with the chat about the inability to win finals over the last few years and losing round one in a pretty embarrassing, not embarrassing, but getting thumped in round one by the Swans. They had a lot of pressure. If they lost to the Bulldogs today, there'd be huge amounts of chat. I reckon they'd have almost as much chat as Collingwood about about pressure on them to perform. Uh, But they showed up. Huge. In fifth place, I have, and it feels a bit unfair that Collingwood's in 10th and Brisbane are in fifth. Okay. But I think Brisbane are a team that are so good and uh, the reason I've got this difference is that Brisbane have a lot of injuries. You have Lockie Neal out. Which is, is shown to be pretty huge. Will Ashcroft, mm. Tom Doody. Uh, Dude. Doody sounds funnier, but I'll sure do that. Damn, that's back to back to back. <laughs> Jeez, that's another short. But I think they're still a really strong side. The team that we saw today, I know that this sounds weird and unfair to the teams that I'm criticizing, but that didn't look like Brisbane Lions. So I don't think they'll consistently play like that. Okay, just unlocking the phone. In fourth place, is there a team you've noticed I haven't said yet? I'm waiting for this team. I'm loving you putting them so high. The Gold Coast Suns. Come on. They've the Gold the Coast keys Suns. to the Lamborghini. They have the keys to the Lamborghini. If you crash the Lamborghini, you probably still get the Hyundai because they're a really good team that I can't see dropping out of the top oh, end of this power They'll probably get a different driver if the Lamborghini crashes. <laughs> Damien Hardwick, you'd say oh, he yeah. gets if, fired? I mean, the, the expectation <laughs> is finals. If they don't make oh. finals this year, oh, absolutely. we'll see. I was more talking like if they fail over the next couple of weeks. Oh, but no. Damien Hardwick is not getting fired this season. But no, they'll back him in. There's no way they fire him. Aiden's waffling. You don't invest that much in a guy. They're paying him outrageous amounts to not back him for like a few seasons. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I love them. I had them in my eight before yeah. the season started. I, wanted, I saved myself to chat about Gold Coast right now. Um their defense is... I know we chatted a little bit about it earlier, but they're good all around the ground and their midfield, arguably the best in the league. I Noah th- Anderson had an awesome performance, by the way. Oh, yeah. He's starting to get the ball on the outside, which is sort of what we wanted to see oh, yeah. for the past couple of years. I mean, Raul is doing the dirty work in there. And as soon as Anderson gets the ball and starts running, he's hitting targets. Yep. And I'm loving it. Yep. And Sammy Flanders walks out with 35 possessions as a midfielder and I think not a hair moved because he just receives those balls from Miller and Raul and Anderson on the outside. And he's... No, but he actually does do a lot of uh, grunt work as well. But yeah, he's been a great addition to that midfield three when they... I think they needed someone else to go in there and be able to match that energy. And he's done a really great job. In third place, and I think a pretty clear third place, and there's a bit of a gap between them and second and a bit of a gap between them and fourth, and that's Carlton. Yeah. Really, really strong. Ideal start to the year, two tight wins, and this is now, in their last six wins, they've all been by less than a goal. They've all been by five points or less, and that is quite unbelievable, but hey, it's what we saw with Collingwood over the last couple of years. Uh, I'm not saying that they're the same team, except... um, when you sort of have that energy that you just have that confidence to win games and well, to get across the line. Just before, uh, probably the first half of last season and the few seasons before that, they really struggled to win the, these close games. They, started, they they lost a lot of games by just a goal, two goals. We know they missed out on finals last the year before last by about a goal or two. Um, back. I think they could have played the... I can't remember if they played in round 23, but then they just missed finals. Oh, they lost the last three games of the season to miss finals. They lost to Brisbane in the final round. I okay, remember. yeah. Um, but yeah, they're really starting to put it together. Yeah. And it's not easy to win close games, especially when teams coming back and there's a lot of pressure on you. Absolutely. Carlton have been really impressive. Love to see it. In second place, and it's, I'm going to put Sydney here and GWS at one, and we can talk about them in tandem. Sydney have been so impressive that you kind of say, how can they not be at one? But GWS have not done anything to be knocked off the throne. Uh, they are now the official premiership favourites. I've been chatting them up all off-season. They are now... The bookies agree with me. They've gotten on my bandwagon. Uh, GWS, 
I think I've said this before, but I think they are, have a top five defense in the league, a top five forward line, and a top five midfield. I didn't agree with you a couple of weeks ago on the top five forward line, but I definitely agree with you now, especially how, how Hogan's continued his form from the back end of last year. Yeah, and guys like Jake Riccardi. And Brown, taking, out of nowhere. Jake Riccardi taking a huge step forward. Callum Brown going crazy in round one. Daniels. Aaron, Brent Daniels. I reckon he was this good last year as well. But And then also Aaron Cadman, who he had the typical key forward struggles last year where really he what a lot of games he just wasn't getting into the game as can often happen with a quite skinny young key forward, but he's showing this year why he was drafted high and why GWS are so high on him. And teams have a lot more to worry about than just Toby Green now. Yeah, and Aaron Cadman is also a second ruck option that's been really solid for them. So GWS strong all over. I just can't see a weakness in the team. I'm yep. just trying to think going through the plays in their team. Yeah, They're strong everywhere. I'd say Sydney, you can probably mention a couple deficiencies that they're cu- currently not showing because they're making up for it, except it's kind of uh, tightly strung in the sense that something could break at any moment in terms of our key forwards. We just have three young key forwards. Logan McDonald is sort of developing into a star, but we haven't seen that proven. So on the key forward front, it could be shaky. There could be games where we don't see them much and also being undersized at the back. So there are a couple things which Sydney are currently being able to hide and do well with, except their potential flaws. I don't see those potential flaws with the GWS. They are so strong and so deep. Some of the guys that are being not picked in that side just sh- are just a testament to what they've got going on. Um, that's all for the power rankings this week. This should be the biggest round of changes, and it should be a bit more moderate after this, now that we've had a little bit of a look at each team. Drink it in. Yeah, I just wanted to finish on a little super coach chat um, just at the end of the week. I know uh, we both weren't too happy with how our teams performed, um, but I'll let you kick us off with, with what you thought, because now we can go through who's actually in our teams. Oh, yeah, we can just talk about some key players that underperformed. Everyone, A, a lot of people had Zach Fisher, and he looked to have the perfect role that everyone wanted but proved to be a professional butcher of the footy. Nick Martin. Pretty similar with Nick Martin, but I don't think that's who he is. Like looking at, I saw a tweet about some of his stats from last year that he's actually a much more effective player than that. It was just a couple of, a few really bad clangers early on uh, in the first game of the season, and I don't think that will continue to be the case. In terms of super coach, I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, who do I trade Martin for? Keep him. Keep him if you've got him. He's... I reckon he's still good value, and I think he'll bounce back. Zach Fisher, I'm not so sure, because North, everyone's roles are changing around so much that they can easily just say, hey, we'd prefer Sheasel, McKercher, and Lazaro to be taking all of those disposals out the back. Fisher, you can just play deep forward and try crumb, crumb some goals there. They can easily do that, so I'm not sure if, how good Fisher's role is because he was honestly very, very poor. Like, I'm starting to eat my words here because... Last oh, yeah. week, I said, do not pick Nick Dacos. <laughs> um, and he's come out on a pretty poor Collingwood side and got 37 disposals and a goal and looked like probably their only positive. Those are the words of a man who has never played Supercoach before. Do not pick Nick Dacos. Yeah. It yeah. did it, it. It wasn't too bad because I had Tom Stewart instead, but, but still, I'm going to back it out. Yeah. It has I'm, been said with Collingwood that they don't play with much of a game plan and that their only game plan is... Get the ball to Nick Dacos. And yet... <laughs> it, it, was, it was really tough to watch. The only thing... I mean, I wanted the Swans to win. That was the main thing. But then the second was Nick Dacos not to touch the ball. And 37 touches. And, and he's so silky with it as well. As in, he gets the ball and he'll drop a shoulder... He'll drop a shoulder one way. He'll go around. He'll efficient handball. He'll find a target inside 50. There's no, there's no weakness. Yeah. There's no weakness. And it, it pains me, but I'm still going to stick it out. I'm only going to pick him up after they're buying round five because he's not going to get any points in round four. The yeah. ice block will have him. And just to finish, we could talk about the big ones that everyone would talk about, like Isaac Heaney. A lot of people picked him. A lot of people stayed away. Gorn. You picked him. I stayed away, and he was great. It looks like a great pick. Gorn, that we stuck with, and he got 162. Let's talk about a couple of our pods. I went Jai Newcomb, thinking that was a really clever selection. I thought this is the year he just takes that step up in this Hawthorne midfield and really takes command. He looked like he just wasn't going after the ball that much, but he's a really good player. I think it may have been a maybe a bit of game fitness first game to the season. I saw him sort of walking from stoppage to stoppage, not quite getting there sometimes. Hopefully that improves. 
Well, I think Lions, he had a really poor first half, but I think he finished on around 90-something points. Really? I think so, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with that performance. And a very low percentage of people have him. I know you took him out at the last minute. For Sam Barry, who got 80. Um, but yeah, our total scores weren't too great. The league code should be on the screen for the entirety of the video is what we're going to do now. You can still join our league. They still get the points. Yes, absolutely. You still get the points that you got. Because it's not a head-to-head league. It doesn't yeah. matter when you join. You get So to. it's just total points. If you want to join in round 24 yep. and, and win the league, uh, go for it. But we'd love to see you in there now. We've currently got eight. We want to aim for 20 at least. League code here. It's No, it's going to be like up here the whole video. Oh, okay. But nice. point to one spot. Where are, where are I just pointing? Right there. Yep. Okay, the lead code will be there, but it'll also be somewhere in the video the entire time and in the description. So join. We want to see your teams. You can take a full look at our teams now that the round is finished. But yeah, um, thank you for listening to our podcast and we'll see you on the next one.